bottom line is the stargates are opening. Even the clouds, the National Oceanographic Administration is saying something's happening. The clouds, the normal clouds that used to be at a specific height are lowing and they're dissipating. That's true. Whatever God made is being taken away. The chemtrails are terraforming the earth, but that's another story. How do the aliens fit in? Just do a five-minute, ten-minute just thing because I don't think people understand that when the Vatican made its, are you going to love the word, quantum shift, to now embrace what they usually teach are demons. And by the way, I was in contact with one of the most prominent uh, sorcerers, an elderly gentleman for the Vatican. So I know from his position what he sees taking place. But so this is, this is a quantum change. Chris dealt with Jerusalem being a critical part of the move, but also how do the aliens fit in? And I'm not trying to take away from Petrus Romanus, but my guess is, is that they're kissing cousins, okay? Okay, well, I'll go there then. I just want people to know that um, when they read the book Petrus Romanus, it's not going to be about aliens. No, uh, no, I understand that. I understand that, and I'm not trying to take away from it. We go When we go to the questions, we'll go specifically to that, but I think, look, we only got 15 minutes before we go to the questions, okay? And okay. I'm getting... I'm getting emails asking me to ask you that, you know, because there are people that have listened to you, are now being, you know, introduced to Chris, but have listened to me, and they're saying, okay, I'm starting to get it now. So if you just want to take five minutes, that's all I'm asking. All right, I'll do that. Okay, and so let me just jump really far forward and just say this. The rabbit hole goes very deep, right? Yep. Um, and, And I will do published work on this probably this year. Uh, in which I'm going to show the world uh, interdisciplinary works from the Vatican um, in which they are uh, explaining how mankind could soon be evangelized, that's their word, during contact with spiritual aliens. Uh, I know that sounds extraordinary. If people want to email me, I'm glad to send them the actual publications from some of the highest placed astronomers inside the Vatican, uh, in which they are talking about us soon being greeted by extraterrestrial civilizations um, and how we will need to respect those intelligences who are going to have, according to these documents from the Vatican, they're going to have, um, let's say, a higher level of understanding of God. And the reason is because they're not fallen, according to this theology. We're fallen. They're not. They're closer to God than we are. And therefore, they're going to have a non-terrestrial intelligence that offers um, better understanding of the relationship between God and the whole of creation. Uh, and that, and and by the way, let me just quote. Let me just quote this document from the Vatican. This quote. This will. This would not immediately oblige the Christian to renounce his own faith in God simply on the basis of the reception of new, unexpected information of a religious character from extraterrestrial civilizations. But such a renunciation could come soon after as the new religious content originating from outside the earth is confirmed as reasonable and credible. Once the trustworthiness of the information has been verified, let me stop for a moment in this quote and ask if anybody can explain to me how it could be verified. How would you verify an an extraterrestrial message? This this really kind of sets me aside. Anyway, the believer would have to reconcile such new information with the truth that he or she already knows and believes on the basis of the revelation of the one and triune God conducting a re-reading of the gospel inclusive of the new data. End quote. So how this information is going to be confirmed as reliable is beyond me. How this more complete E.T. gospel 
is going to de-emphasize or significantly modify our understanding of salvation through Jesus Christ. This is something that's also beyond me. But you have uh, Vatican Observatory directors from um, uh, Christopher Corbali, for instance, in his article, What If There Were Other Inhabited Worlds, concluding that Jesus simply might not remain the only word of salvation. That's his words. Quote, I would try to explore the alien by letting it be what it is without rushing for a classification category, not even presuming two genders, Corbali said. And then he drops this bombshell, quote, While Christ is the first and last word, the Alpha and Omega spoken to humanity, he is not necessarily the only word spoken to the universe. For the word spoken to us does not seem to exclude an equivalent word spoken to aliens. They, too, could have had their Logos event, whatever that event might have been. It does not have to be a repeated death and resurrection if we allow God more imagination than some religious thinkers, i.e., by the way, let me insert here, Steve Quayle, Tom Horn, Chris Putnam, et al., uh, some religious thinkers seem to have, for God as omnipotent is not restricted to one form of language, the human, end quote. So what we have are very high-ranking spokespersons for the Vatican who uh, in recent years, including 2011 and we'll see what they say in 2012, are offering language acknowledging, first of all, the uh, likelihood of extraterrestrial intelligence, and secondly, a dramatic role that E.T.'s introduction to human civilization is going to play in regard to altering established creeds about anthropology, philosophy, religion, uh, uh, redemption, but uh, specifically a rereading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, um, and by the way, this could be <laughs> consequential to the very near future. Um, and uh, so is that kind of what you wanted me to say, Steve? Absolutely. And, and Chris, I think this is this is critical too because, you know, from your perspective of writing, you know, co-authoring and, and doing all your investigation, I'd like you to address that too if you wouldn't mind in five minutes. You know, it won't hurt us to take an extra five minutes. And, and again, you guys, I'm not trying to assign, but you, we've just been on almost for three hours, and where'd the time go, you know? <laughs> That's what they all say about a Mega Man radio. Yep. So, Steve, were you, were you asking me about my opinion on the the alien question? I'm asking you about the change in the theology of basically the Catholic hierarchy and in and, and, and relationship to the alien. Basically, what they're undermining, if, if the basic Bible is there's no name given under heaven at which a man mm -hmm. can be saved. So I want your take on that because, again, you know, you are a, a, a man who gets in and deals in, you're delves into things, and so, you know, please address that issue. Well, I'll tell you, what Tom just said is, is very disturbing. I mean, anybody that's talking about changing the gospel, I mean, that, you know, the Apostle Paul said in Galatians, if, if, if I or an angel from heaven preach another gospel to you, let them be accursed. So, I mean, you know, biblically, there's absolutely no, no way we should accept anything like what, what he was just talking about. Um, you know, I, I think it's really it's really kind of strange the way the Vatican has been um, talking about, you know, that that's a subject that I follow and, and I'm interested in. It's also one that's really hard to, uh, to, to, to parse because there's so much bad information and, you know, there's so many people that hoax UFO things and things like that that it's really hard, you know, to find out what's real. But I follow the subject very, very closely. One of the things that, you know, in the research for this book that, you know that I was really shocked to discover was you know how how the Marian apparition kind of fits in to Catholic theology, and you know it, that is one way that I can see some kind of intersection perhaps with with UFOs, and it, it might be another thing that you know you were mentioning earlier. You were talking about Islam, and you know, and we're also talking about this third temple thing. Now, you know, one of the things that I, I think is a live possibility is, you know, we're talking about, you know, a religion of Antichrist in Jerusalem and a third temple, and somehow 
a one world religion, you know, is what's predicted. Now what would poss what could possibly unite Judaism, Catholicism and Islam under one temple? I mean that that seems literally impossible with the way things are today. But if you had something come in from outside like an alien presence or something like that, you know, that says, you know, here we are, you know, and and preaches this peaceful new gospel that Tom was mentioning there. You know, I could see how that that might unite all the world religions under under this new thing. Um, that that's a live possibility. It's going to take something that powerful. Now, the, the apparition um, is, is making these kind of statements, though. I mean, I, I did a whole chapter on the Marian apparition in the book, and um, in in the Netherlands, in um, in Amsterdam, the, the apparition is appearing and calling itself Our Lady of the Nations, and it's talking about uniting the world. Okay, and we look at the prophecies in the book of Revelation, and we see that, you know, Revelation 17 is talking about this one world religion all coming together. And, uh, you know, what could do that? You know, it's interesting that the Muslims also venerate Mary. Okay, and, you know, that seems to be an intersection between the two, you know, classically opposing faiths that could actually bring them together. Now, you know, I, I don't know how that's going to play out, but it, it could actually intersect with this thing that Tom's talking about, you know, with the Vatican hinting at alien presences. Now, it's going to take something external and something really huge to get the world's attention to unite everybody under one, un, under one leadership and one faith. And, you know, I think that that is something that we can't exclude because it seems like, you know, possibly that is the strong delusion that the Apostle Paul talked about in Second, Second Thessalonians chapter two. I Could agree be. with you on that. Absolutely. Hey, hey, Chris. One thing you might factor in too, I think, is fascinating. Fatima, the visions of Fatima, which is obviously a city in Portugal. But what is Mohammed's daughter's name? Yeah. So, right. Right. So I, I made the statement, you guys, and of course. You know, obviously my fans didn't appreciate it 15 years ago, but I said I can literally see how that's going to merge together. Because, look, you've got the whole concept. You've got the Islamic, and, and boy, I wish some of these generals in our Pentagon would get their acts together because they don't understand the theology, the ideology of Ahmadinejad when he believes that if it's not, his exact words were, if 50 million Iranians have to be martyred, to bring on the Iman Mahdi, then so be it. Well, now you've got everybody working together, so I think it's fascinating, okay, just that I don't believe there are any coincidences. And remember, you quoted Galatians a minute ago, and, and what's neat, Chris, about that, that's the only time I see Paul saying something twice. He says, let him be accursed. Again, I say unto you. Remember that? Yeah, he does. That, 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 yeah. Double, that double, if you will, in the mouth, two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't happen that much in either the Old or New Testament. And when it does, I mean, it, it's, like, uh, it's like God saying, listen, I have esteemed my word above my name. And he's putting his hallmark on it. So I just want to throw that in because obviously, look, there are seducing spirits. There are people that literally believe they sit down in a seance, call up the spirit of Uncle George. It's not Uncle George. The Bible teaches to give a man once die and once a judgment. But it's a familiar spirit, a spirit that is familiar with them. So now, Tom, you know, and I think that, boy, I wish we could do a, another show on Stargate, you guys, because here's the thing. You, Tom, made that statement, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Until you said that to me, it wasn't time for me to embrace that and that was at that exact moment so many years ago and now all we see is so many attempts to open the gates by the way there are 72 gates uh there are 72 star gates there are 72 goetic demon gates there are 72 ionospheric heaters like harp we're seeing all the 72 and for the record there are 72 fusion centers in the united states okay the combination of all the intelligence gathering and law enforcement, 72. That number is throughout. So I think, Chris, the point that you're bringing up is absolutely critical for the people listening tonight. And look, every time I do a talk radio program, and bless you both for coming on, and we'll take the questions or whatever in a few minutes, but I know this. I know what can I say to the people, and this is how I get to the bottom line, you guys. It may sound uh, uh, not the right way to say it, but if I could say to the people of God, and I knew that today was my last night, what would I tell them? That's what I try and bring into 
into a conversation like this. And, Tom, that's why I took you to the bottom line, okay? Sometimes as researchers, I mean, I as... I, Gentlemen, uh, excuse me one second, please. Folks, so we're going into the fourth hour to hear it. Well, I, I think it's, 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 it's critical that, that if this is the last thing, we have to bring people to the lateness of the hour. I think we've lived, lived in the indefinite prophetic long, and now we're in the it's happening now. So, Tom, it's not, you know, listen, if the guy croaks, forgive me, Ratzinger gets knocked off, murdered, assassinated, I mean, this thing can come so quick, and I think that we don't set time, but we can look at the events and the fact that you guys wrote the book at this time, and all the headlines are basically, you were ahead of the headlines. That, that has to tell me that the time clock is punched, and we're on accelerated events being fulfilled right before our eyes. Hey, Bruce, let's take a, let's take a break now, and then that'll be our last break before the end of the show. Okay, gentlemen, we're going to take about a five-minute break, and we're going to be back, and uh, we're streaming... Still live, folks, at omegamanradio.com. 